today I'm gonna restock a lot of things including this Valentine letter set letter writing set it also comes with an envelope and I print on the envelope as well so that's what I'm gonna start with because it's the most like annoying part <laughs> because for example I just printed the first test and then the printer for some reason messed it up for I have no idea why and I, I didn't remember also if I had to put the flap on the on the left or on the right of the printer like it, it goes like this With some printers you're gonna feed the paper like this and it's just gonna print on this upper side of the paper but then with some others it's gonna roll backwards like this and then it ends up printing on the the other side of the paper the back I don't know whatever is the front or the back but and then you have to kind of understand your printer and how it works so you get the exact outcome that you want I remember for the first time that I tried these I printed upside down so yeah wait I can show you something so I stick a little art print like a small tiny version of it this way so I remember for the next ones that I have to load it like this so now I'm just gonna make a few copies of these I think I'm gonna make six one two three four five okay gotta get one more and I'll print those envelopes first Got all my envelopes printed. I found some leftovers from the other time I I've, I've made the sets, so I'm gonna use these and print out some more. I think I need six. Yeah, so that's next.
As you can see, my week was going very well. I was happy doing things for the shop. Then comes the highest point, which was getting a new chair. That's actually a funny bit. Me and my husband, we were thinking of upgrading our desk chairs and the first thing I thought was gaming chairs, completely laughing it off like <laughs> I would never go for these gaming chairs because they're ridiculously ugly, they're gigantic, it's the most visually disturbing piece of furniture I can put in my room. Plus they're super expensive. Let's actually do some research here, see what the internet has to recommend me and buy a good well-balanced ergonomic chair. Well. Turns out that they exist, but they are even more visually disturbing and incredibly even more expensive. I couldn't even believe it. So I faced my preconceptions of gaming chairs and they turned out to be quite accessible comparing to those others, which feels like a joke to pass me. And I went with a freaking kitty chair. It's obnoxious how bulky and gigantic this feels in my room. But I will put all my guard down to say that it is actually the most comfortable desk chair I've ever sat on in my whole life. Not that I go around sitting on chairs. Uh, oh no, wait, that's literally what I did in IQ. But this compares to a fancy car seat, which is actually how these gaming chairs started as. Yes, I was that nerdy person reading about chairs. And you can also remove that kitty bit, the head thingy. So if you want to go less flashy, that's also an option. <laughs> well, going forward, I was the happiest person sitting on a huge pink chair that stands out so much I was having a hard time accepting it when some other event took place. <laughs> I'll let the other Ivna talk to you about it. Hello you, how are you? How have you been? To be honest, it feels quite weird to be filming again. <laughs> Let me tell you what's happening. So this past week, I lost my hard drive. I didn't really lose it literally. I still have it with me, but it stopped working suddenly. It broke inside a little piece. In it, I had all my personal and professional work, aside from the usual pictures and videos that we all have. I took it to a couple professional companies to try to retrieve the data. I'm not sure you know about these companies, I didn't, but they're pretty big and they work with like the government, the police, airplane companies, IT, big IT corporations, and pretty much all of these big, big organizations that we can think of. They work on quite complex cases, like for example, hard drives that survived a flood or a fire. So it gets pretty crazy. And as you can already tell from all this scenery that you can imagine, it's quite expensive. When I read on their websites that an initial evaluation was gonna happen and then they would give me a quote that could range from $200 to $5,000. I was like, nah, it's okay. Of course, mine's gonna be on the lower end because it's not burned. It's not full of water. So it's, it's here, it's, it looks great. So I just sent it in. <laughs> then I got my quote of $2,476. I couldn't even believe it when I saw it. I, I just saw it and I was like, <laughs> let's laugh because... And the worst part, there is no guarantee whatsoever that they would be able to recover everything or your most important files because it's nobody's fault. Like things happen and then things break and then you cannot recover them because they either get corrupted or they're just lost. That's just how technology works. There is a fine line between safely understanding what's going on in there and unfortunately touching something wrong and then destroying the circuits forever. So basically it's very risky and there is no actual way to know what you're going to be able to retrieve unless you're already there. And also sometimes you do have to buy another piece of the, like another component of the device so you have to replace it and that costs money 
So for those reasons, I entered a very weird state of mind. A battle between logical me and emotional me. They're just digital files. You can create more. You can draw again, you can film again. You could just generate more files. It's easy. Yeah, but what about all the work that I put in? Where does all that go? It's an accident. It happens. That's why we work, to be able to get money and pay for things. With $2,000, I could buy a new phone, buy a new computer, pay months of rent. You cannot be thinking about all the possibilities of money like that. You lost something and then you have the option of getting it back. That's it. I'm gonna switch to a voiceover so you can watch me draw while I talk about this. So, as you can see, it's very annoying to try to make our feelings seem logical and try to try to make it all make sense. When really, it's just uh, a, an emotional thing. There's no sense to make out of this. If I was, for example, a big company, I wouldn't even think about it. I would just pay because my work is definitely more important than money. And if there is a way to pay for it, we would. Yes, I could work to pay $2,000 to retrieve my data, but then I'd feel very bad for spending so much money. I had all sorts of support from my friends, family and co-workers being very understanding to them actually helping me pay for that, which is insane and extremely lucky of me. But I still felt wrong to go with it. Pretty much everybody was telling me, Ivna, if you want to do it, you can do it. We're here for you. We understand that the things are really important. And that's where it gets really weird and tricky. I am the one responsible for that decision because everybody's supporting me in anything I do. So I have to judge whether it's worth it or not. And why is it weird? Because then I started trying to measure the importance of my files and if they were worth $2,000 or so. Personally, I find these moments in life very interesting. There is always something to learn from it and to learn how to deal with it because it's not going anywhere and you still have to make a decision. So to help myself out, I started writing down everything I remembered was important for my hard drive. I organized it in a list of priority. With client work in general, how much is my time worth to redo everything? Plus, it's never gonna be the exact same because we're not copy machines. Even if we have previous versions so that we can visually refer to, we cannot match 100%. So the thought of it not being perfect will haunt you while you redo it. That's already something we gotta face and work on. With my personal work and all the drawings, paintings, paid tools, plugins, softwares I gather through the years... Ah, that's a tough one. I'm an artist, I could just create more, shouldn't I just forget whatever I did before? I didn't really lose anything skill-wise, I'm capable of just producing more. How can you put a price on documenting your art journey and visual progress of your skills and artwork? I imagine myself a few years from now looking back at this decision and being so mad at past Ivna, because I believe I will practice more and get better at my skills and craft. So I'll look back to this day and think, I cannot believe you paid $2,000 for this crap. <laughs> I want to slap you in the face, but then I'm going to be the one with the bruise. So wait, I yeah, no. <laughs> with personal photos, videos and memories, how many times do we actually look at old pictures? We live in an era of so much personal content being generated all the time that it's less and less possible to go through all of that. On the other hand, it is useful. It's so easy to take pictures that we do it all the time, even with important things too. I find myself going back to phone backups pretty often, to be honest. How can you put a price on personal photos and videos? In my case, I moved abroad two years ago. I don't get to see my family very often. It gets so dramatic to think that we have no idea of when we can actually do that again because of the current world situation. How can you put a price on getting back memories and memories with your family that you don't see all the time? Very, very strange. As you can tell, the more I thought about it, the more tangled and complex it became. So I took some time to reflect and decided to kind of move on. 
And here's what I've learned. Number one, at first, leave it on hold for a bit while you explore the possibilities. Is there something I can do? Can I download a software to try to retrieve my data for myself? Or should I find professionals to help me? What is the range of price of that? And would it actually work? And would it be possible? Number two, once you have your options, uh, it's time to face it because it is happening. Sometimes we just try to ignore it for a bit and pretend like it's just gonna go back to normal. Or our brains kind of do that, like on defense mode, to try not to deal with the problem. And we do that with so many things in life. <laughs> so yeah, it is good to do that for a while, but then it comes a time that we actually have to face it because, well, it is there. Number three, buy yourself some cloud storage. Actually, this should be number zero. <laughs> Start already backing up whatever you still have to make sure it's not going to happen again, at least. That's one of the most comforting things. We get so used to having the digital world around. It's the classical taking things for granted and forgetting that they might not be there one day. It's nice because it's something that you can do right away. Like you can literally start saving it now. And while you're going through the annoying period of time of dealing with the whole situation, at least you have that little bit of comfort in knowing that it's not gonna happen again. We hope. <laughs> Number four, take some time to just be gentle with yourself. Things happen and if we keep putting ourselves down, it just gets worse. If you blame yourself for not having done this or that, for not have saved, this or that, you're gonna be in such a negative hole that it just makes it harder to swim back up again. That's probably the number one comment that friends and family do when you just tell them what happened. They're gonna be like, oh, but why haven't you saved that? Or, oh, you were not using cloud storage already? Or, oh, yeah, that thing happens all the time, you should have done this or that. But yeah, it's kind of easy to think that now. In hindsight, everything makes sense and it's just so obvious, but while your hard drive was working fine, nobody wanted to tell you anything, right? <laughs> there was like this huge chunk of time where things were just going normal and going well, so it's not really something nice to say, I think. Well, number five, watch YouTube videos, series, entertainment, go to nature, things that won't make you think of your lost work. It sounds like obvious and so much fun, but it's actually very frustrating because somehow you're linking everything to your loss. You look at a tree and then you're like, oh, I drew a tree in 2016. And then you see a couple in a cafe and a movie and then you're like, oh no, I was filming that video in a cafe two weeks ago. And suddenly like the whole world is sending you signals of something that you did and that you lost. But that's actually part of our brains as well because it's quite a strong feeling that you're living. So your brain is not really ready to just let it go and think about something else that easily. So number six is, well, you cannot really run away from it. So write down your feelings, like put into words exactly how you feel the best you can describe. No one's gonna read that, so it's just for you and for your body to understand what's really going on inside. Number seven goes very well with the previous point. Just um, let it out. Ask somebody you trust to listen to all the details you want to pour out, cry, record yourself talking about it. <laughs> Number eight, the hardest part is getting back to work when you feel the loss still. You think everything is a waste of time, waste of effort, useless. You're gonna avoid doing it a lot. It's gonna take a lot of mental effort because your brain decided it's, it really doesn't want to go back there. My brain was sad and stuck where the loss happened. So I didn't even want to sit down at my desk because it meant dealing with it. So I drank coffee, which might sound really silly and simple, but I don't ever drink coffee. I'm very, very sensitive to it. It kind of works like a very strong medicine for me. So it really pumps me up. So it helped me to put aside the feelings and ju just like jump straight into it. 
Number nine, you can take some time to gather what you can still find around in old backups, emails, WhatsApp conversation files, and cloud storage, if you had one. Number 10 is to start. Tell yourself you already did everything you can and you just have to go through this. Don't put yourself down, it was not your fault. Even if you dropped it, it was not your intention, you didn't break anything on purpose. So don't make it harder than it already is. From now on you're gonna do better, but there is no use in ruminating so much and hurting your precious self. Oh, and I forgot one very important point. People will try to make you feel like you're exaggerating so much. Like, you shouldn't even talk about it because it's just so simple and so small and in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter at all, like it's nothing. They see it with their own eyes, so they, they didn't really lose their own things. How could they possibly know? If you're lucky to have a sensitive friend or a really good friend or somebody that has gone through this experience before, then they're not gonna probably put you down or make it worse. But most people, since they don't really know what, like, what is that and how that feels, it's hard for them to empathize or to try to or try to understand how it really, really is. So just don't let anybody tell you that your emotions are not valid or they're small or insignificant in the grand scheme of things or anything like that. Maybe some other day you will feel differently about it, but not right now. And that's what it is, whether somebody believes it or not. I guess the least we can do is just talk about things when it happens and try to reflect a little bit and try to learn from it. That's like the best we can do out of really, really unpleasant situations, right? I think I'll end this very emotional video right here. I'm sorry to be such a downer today, but um, I hope you never have to go through this and it never happens to you. And if unfortunately it does, I hope it helps a little bit to know that you're not alone. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Definitely gonna be more cheerful than this one. But yeah, I'll see you then. Bye!